New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ebro in the morning. Beautiful Laura Stiles. Uh, Rosenberg's not here. He's on the ESPN assignment in Bristol. Mm, mm. Give it up for Nick Legend. Stefan Marbury, peace, peace, New York peace. legend, Coney Island legend. Brooklyn. Yo, fam, uh, you need Clorox? Are you just... <laughs> you good? No? I'm good. You yeah. sure? I'm good. You work in China, though. Yeah, I work in China. You work in New York. Yeah, we got a, We only got 20 they tell us about, which is really probably 200. Say it again? If they telling us we got 20 cases of coronavirus in <laughs> New York, I'm saying it's probably... I run the number up. But you just flew in from over there, right? No, I didn't. I've been here for a while. Oh, so we good. You good. You so yeah. we don't need this either. No, you don't need a mask. Oh, okay, all right. If cool. you got it, you got it already. So everybody got it if you got it. Facts, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Facts. you don't now, need all of that. Now, how long you been working over in China? Ten years. And um, how's the team that you coach? The team is good. You know, it's a team that was in last place. We're in eighth place right now. So we doing all right after the break. Um, we recently had Rich Kleiman on the program, mm -hmm. and he told us about this uh, project that you guys worked together on that is now coming out, mm -hmm. which is why you up here. Tell us about this It's a documentary. It's about a kid from Coney Island giving kids and people the, the real and the understanding about what went on during the time period when basketball was going on when I was playing here, playing in New York, you know, playing in Lincoln, playing at Georgia Tech. All of the teams that I played for, the ups, the downs, it's truth, it's honest, it's real, it's authentic. So the documentary covers everything from childhood all the way to present day? Yeah, and the 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 best part is we have, like, my mom and my, my sister, my brothers, they're basically narrating the story. Oh, they're that's telling dope. the story, and then I come on at the end, and I give the, the whole China <laughs> Um, The... The Stephon Marbury we know from that era playing basketball, being a superstar in high school, mm. and then going to play in the city he was from, mm. crazy-ass New York. That particular challenge, right, is a unique one for, a, first, a young man, and second, you know, a superstar athlete because everything from your neighborhood is on your doorstep all the time. Mm. I'd love to hear from you how challenging it was professionally and personally. I mean, professionally, you I had a I had a, a really good foundation because I had brothers that played basketball. My oldest brother who turned 60 today, he played against Jordan when he played at the University of Georgia. Then I had another brother that played for Texas AM. He was the 17th leading scorer in the nation as a junior. Then my other brother was highly recruited from Pittsburgh, he signed with Ten Tennessee, you know, when the Big East was crazy hot. Syracuse, those those were the teams that were recruiting my brother. So I saw this whole process, so the professional side. My dad, you know, was a was was a, a mastermind at making sure that we played basketball and we went to school and did the things that we were supposed to do. My grandmother played basketball. My father from Chattanooga, Tennessee. My mom's from New York. Can you imagine that mix? Right. <laughs> so for me, I had the professional side, you know, that that part was was easy because I had people before me that knew the game and they knew what was up. So I was already hip to what was going on in basketball, the media, all of that stuff. I just basically was able to just go on the court and do my thing. Personally, I mean, you just live. You grew up in New York, you know? City so nice, they named it twice. That's basically what it is, yeah. right? So you you know you you see things coming, you know things coming. You know, it come at you at that speed, and that's that's the moment. So you you make those decisions on the fly, quick, and it's easy to uh, adjust and adapt. But the, it was, I mean, from uh, robberies to just drama in the street, right? Like that was, I mean, that's New York shit. But once you make it to a certain level, you know, obviously when we're hearing about it, we're like, <laughs> damn, like. Because, you know, you got to think that that street stuff distracts you in your personal life, right? Nah. I mean, uh, in your professional life. Now, nah, you could get robbed tonight. <laughs> that yeah. That's that's something that, that could happen in New York. That's just what it is. Right. You know, it's just who you are and how you rock. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that happens that you get caught slipping. That 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 happened, but you know you gotta learn from that, that's right. and you do learn from it. So I mean, these are these are all things that go on in New York that happen every day. Um. Talk about dealing with the New York media, 
which is a whole other level of being a professional athlete in New York. How was that? It's people. I mean, you got people who, you know, rock with people. Mm -hmm. And they talk about you. They write about you. They give you uh, a, a, a vision of what's happening on the earth with other people. That's what it is. That's how I look at the media now. And I don't really look at it as we looking at the paper. We, we, we experiencing something that <laughs> is brand new on earth about what's happening. This is what they want to tell people. Were you this mature with regard to dealing with this stuff when you was coming up? Was it, or did you? I have mean, to... you learn all of that stuff, but yeah. you know about it. You grow up in the projects. You see this. You see crack. You see guns. You see all of the different things that you don't want kids to be exposed to. So you, you know better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you see that and you know that, you you know which way to go. You know not to go over there because they shooting. You don't run that way. You run that way, mm -hmm. right? So all of this stuff, you you learn this stuff at an early age. But more importantly, you know better. <laughs> And when you know better, when you get older, you you know these things, your, your senses are on and they're up. Um, are you watching the Knicks recently and, and their struggles? You paying attention at least. I mean, I watch, but I don't really watch. I see when they're playing against a good team, like if they're playing against Zion, if they're playing against the Lakers, you know, you'll catch it and watch it. But, you know, I got the NBA app on my phone. I, I check it out here and there. Are you a Knicks fan still? I'm still a Knicks fan. I bleed orange and blue. That's That never changes. When you grow up a Knicks fan, you grow up watching the Knicks, you don't. You can't just change. I mean, you, you try to change from it don't a, feel right. A Nick hat to a, another hat, and you're a real New Yorker, and somebody see you, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's <laughs> over with for you. So, if you have, if, would, would you ever be a Brooklyn Nets fan? Never in life. No, I'm a I'm a I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan because I played there. I played for the team. So yep. I'm a Suns fan. I'm a Timberwood fan. I'm all of those fans. But everybody know that when New York stand that in my heart. I mean, did, it's from when I was younger. How did you feel about the whole Spike Lee situation? I mean, he just got to go through another door. That's all. At the end of the day, I mean, you know, everybody's saying about the respect. I respect that, too, as far as that. But different people were running the, the operation down, so they feel differently about how they feel. But I do feel like he's supposed to be honored with respect because he's been there. He spent a multitude of million do millions of dollars to right. basically go to the game and cheer. So I, I, it might be a little bit of frustration. It might be some other stuff as well, but at the end of the day, he just got to go to another door. If he go through another door, I went. I went and sat back down there after all of what happened with me. He 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 could definitely do that. Um, do you think that there's a bigger problem other than just coaching with the Knicks? Is New it York Knicks is gonna continue to be the number one basketball franchise in the in in basketball? It's, I mean, we talking about the NBA. We talking about the world too. So it's the it's the highest grossing team. If the popcorn not gonna stop popping and the beer keep flowing and people still buying season tickets, obviously it's okay. So people keep going to the game. People still go to the games and they watch the game and they cheer for the other team. They cheer for guys when they first come out. They come in to see those guys play as well. So it's the mecca of basketball. So if you could win in New York, that's when it's hype. That's when it's dope. But if you're not winning, this is what's going on. The back page, front page. I was looking. Oh yeah, Spike. See it on the back page. They're gonna talk about this. this. Is this is good news right here? This is the sixth man right here. He's on the bench now for real. <laughs> Wait, so I, I so you're saying <clears throat> if the people keep going to the game and the Knicks keep making money, they're gonna be the same. It's just gonna keep. No, I'm not the saying same. it's going to be the same. I don't know if it's going to change, but you're still you still have the same habit. You still talk about the same thing every day. Right. So if you keep talking about the same thing every day and you're not doing anything different. That's what's going on. It's still making money. It's still so selling. So now I think they, they're reporting anyway. Last night they was chanting, sell the team, sell the team. You know how many chants I heard in New York? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, but see, now, but Dolan, Dolan, they say, or the security is pointing out people and threatening to arrest them for that shit. Oh, uh, man, ain't nobody doing nothing. Ain't nobody going nowhere. Everything is the same, homie. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so so you don't, um, do you think Dolan should sell the team? I think Dolan is a businessman, and I think Dolan's going to keep doing what he's doing to continue to make money. That's what I think Mr. Dolan's going to do. Yeah, he want to win it if he could win. If he's not winning, he's not winning. Right. I mean, it, does it matter? It's not affecting the... It's a right. cash cow. It's not affecting the real... The, 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 real it's the, the whole... 
Madison Square Garden that's going to sell forever. It's not going nowhere. It's and the, the controversy Mecca. sells too. You talk about it, you buy it. So you live in it. That's what you're doing. Right. Um, what's the name of the uh, of the doc again? A Kid from Coney Island. A Kid from Coney Island. But this is the wild part. Good luck, Leon. That's the new this GM. This is the new GM. Yes. Oh, yeah. This, they hired, this guy was an agent. Yes. This is why I'm looking at this. I'm like... Yes. This is crazy. He's president of the team. He's president yeah. of the yeah, team now. Look, an uh, agent is the president of a team. Ooh. It's happening in real time, folks. Stefan Marbury getting up to the time. <laughs> that's, that's wow. Why does that pique your interest? It piqued my interest because he manages players. That's right. Or used to. He used to, yeah, because he has a job. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. All right, all right. I'm looking at Wait, this. Wait, World Wide West is officially a part of the organization. Oh, he's, 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 uh, LeBron he's a man. Yeah. LeBron, the black kid? World Wide West. Head? Yeah, yeah, what? He's a, he's a consultant now. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Steve Stout's a marketing consultant, too. Oh, 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 oh Rebranding the team. They, oh, they about to rebrand the garden. That's what's about to happen, because you don't really... Basketball, that's not his lane, but... It's not no lanes no more. It's really straight business. Yeah. It's a good move. It's a good money move. It's a money move. Concert's going to be different. Steve Stout there. Oh, yeah, I think we should have that. Oh, okay. They now, making moves. How how in love with uh, coaching young people have you become? Like, how is this something that you would want to go to? You want to coach in college? You want to coach other places? I'm giving back. That's I'm giving back the same energy people gave to me on earth. That's what I'm doing. I'm basically, people that help me become what I've become, I'm trying to help people become better. And when I give them those tools for them to be consistent, <clears throat> they really understand the rules and playing the game and understanding the game and why they play the game. Because dominating on the court is fun. People want to know how you do that when you do that. Like, that's not easy to do that on that stage. If people could talk all day, all day long, BS and go back and forth. But when you get on the court and you really go do it, <clears throat> that's when you become immortal, right? I'm, I'm shocked by this, though. He stuck. He backed to uh, Leon know, Rose. Know, wow. <laughs> now, how, how Rob you... Kal now, Rob Kalinka, for the, Kalinka, Kalinka, excuse me, for the Lakers, was, wasn't that Kobe's, Kobe's agent? Kobe's agent. It's, 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 it's a thing. It's, I'm not in. I'm not in the circle. I'm. I'm not in the circle on it like that. Right. So I don't. I don't know. I'm in China, coaching. Right. So when I come home and I see this, I'm looking at this face and I'm like, Garden, Rose, Spike, Oakley. It's different changes going on. It's not. Not the same. That's like right. The people who were ornaments on a Christmas tree, there are no longer ornaments. Mm. <laughs> you spin bars right now. <laughs> no, it's, there's nothing there. Yeah. Forget about what was done to it. It's smashed. It's gone. Right. We don't see that. Do you um what 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 do you see as your best move as Stefan Marbury, <clears throat> both uh professionally and personally? What's the what's the greatest thing that you feel like you've done? Because I feel like you're in a different space as a as a man after basketball, just hearing you talk about giving back and That's what, always been giving back. This isn't this isn't nothing new. Mm -hmm. I've been governing the hood with love and with with things that people need that are essential to their lives for years. This isn't just something that had just happened. People and even just the Starberry shoe tried was that, to right? tell my story, and right. they wanted to be the narrative of my story, and I wouldn't allow them to do that. Right. So that bothered a lot of people, and it's understandable. But you know, that's 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 not me being in a different space. I'm in a different space. As you see me, because you never met me before, you never been around me, you don't know me, you only know what you heard and what right. people told you. Mm -hmm. So now you're learning something different as you look, we look at each other, we, right. we see each other, mm -hmm. you feel me? So me, I stand for my people for real. I don't stand fake for my people. I go and I go do it. Mm -hmm. You don't become immortal with statues and museum in other countries just by talking. That's right. I'm not here to confuse the children. I'm here to help the children because mm -hmm. I have children. My, my my mom had children. My mom mom had children, and it's a it's, it's a legacy. It's a real thing. But when people try to knock your legacy down 
and you go someplace else and then you come back, they see, oh, it really was real. Yeah. No, this wasn't fake. This this was as real as it gets. As far as what I'm trying to do on earth to help people that look like me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not I don't I never poison my people and then talked about it to people. All right. That's something I never will do, wouldn't do. It, it doesn't make sense. And you saying you're for me, mm -hmm. you're not for me. You started from the root wrong. So if you start from the root wrong, how can I trust you as a full-blown tree? That's right. <laughs> what am I really eating? Right. You're poisoning me so you can make more money. Right. No, this is not what's going on. I'm, I'm really here for my people. So I'm a little confused by some of the stuff that I see and what's going on, but... We all come back when we're supposed to come back and see what we're supposed to see. I'm right. blessed to be here on earth. So I'm good. That's you, my space. You um also were one of the, weren't you one of the first athletes to do an international shoot deal like that, right? I mean, it's not a, I left, what I did was I left America and I went to play basketball in another country because my opportunity and my time ran out in the NBA and my brand died when I, when I was doing it. I was literally helping black people who were on food stamps be able to have a luxury lifestyle. So that got shut down and it got killed, right? It got shut down and it got killed because it really was helping people in their minds as far as them living and how they were basically going to feed their, their kids and buy their kids what they wanted to have because they couldn't afford to go buy $150 sneakers. Right. But now they can have like 30 different styles of sneakers and be fresh every day. So now that mentality was changing. I, they crushed that and killed that. So I went to China to learn how to do it myself. So I didn't have to go through a giant and learn how to basically build a whole vertical platform. So now I go to the factory myself. I fly there and meet the people. And when they see me from what I've done in China, can you imagine that yes, conversation? Wow. It's a different type of love, right? Right. So I'm trying to build a vertical platform so I can create a, a, a access portal for people to have access to have something at an affordable price on Earth forever. Right. That was my mission. That's what I was saying. But because I ate Vaseline, I'm crazy. I said your mother sniff coke and your pops smoke crack, and you talking about me <laughs> and Vaseline? <laughs> I said, it don't make sense, homie. They got you confused. Right. I'm okay. How's your mom doing? Right. I know her. I actually gave her money one time to buy food, but you didn't know that. You weren't around. Right. Like, you got to think, homie. Like, think about what's going on. I'm here for you. Even when you tried to put me down, I'm still here for you because I know better. Because my mom and my dad, that's why I know better. So, you know, when people talk about me change, I didn't change. I'm still stuff. I'm still that nigga from Coney Island. Straight like that, period. It ain't nothing different, but I got an understanding about what I, what message I want to teach the children and the kids, right, to be that example for them. So that's what a kid from Coney Island is about. It's not me. It's all of the kids from Coney Island. They all going to know, I'm a kid from Coney Island, homie. Yeah. That's, that's what I am. I'm a kid from Coney Island. I mean something on this earth. Just because I live in this small place called Coney Island, that they don't know how big Coney Island is. We are the amusement and the amazement for Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay? You come to have entertainment where I'm from. You come and lay on my beach, and you live where I live at for whenever you're there. Because you're there, you're living there, you're in that space, having fun, eating the best Franks on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan's, homie. Yeah. You got what I'm saying? So <laughs> I grew up like this. You come and experience this. Right. It's a difference from what you and I know and what we understand. Right, right, right. So when you see my cousin come and then Lance Stevenson come and then you see this person come, you're not even talking about the population in Coney Island, homie. <laughs> it's not right. in the water. This is what we did. This is what's being done. You got what I'm saying? Yes, we all have our trials, our tribulations, but nobody's perfect. You got you got skeletons. She got skeletons. I got them. We all got them. Ain't nobody perfect. But what we really trying to do collectively as a unit, for real, because it's all talk from what I'm hearing. Nobody not really going to do it on the on the on the real real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, when people say that, it's a it's it's a question about me changing. Yeah, I change as a man. If you don't grow from 20 to 30, from 30 to 40, something is wrong, Got man. Involved. 
You got to grow. You yeah. dead if you're not growing. You still syndicating that same message every day to people, to their minds, the frequency that they listening to, and they are imbalanced. They don't have no balance. How? They can't flow like water. They can't be like, they can't be that peace because they don't know. They never tapped inside themselves because they don't have no higher power. Mm. It, God, whoever you pray to, Allah, Jesus, whoever, if it's peace, it's love. That's what it is, right? You use what you use to stay connected because when you having that breakdown in your mind, it's not when you're going crazy. It's when you're <coughs> by yourself. People ask me, oh, you when you was, you was about to die, you was talking about you going to die and you was going to kill yourself. I was like, yeah. I said, I felt like I wanted to kill myself from what was going on from what I was dealing with. I was dealing with real things that was going on in my life. My dad died. I said, so I can't pray and cry on the internet when I made the internet high. I made you do what you do on IG, homie, when you was going live and when you go live right now. You was the one, you, you asked your brother, your uncle and your father about when I was doing what I was doing. Why are you doing what you doing right now? Like, I'm, I started that. I made it okay for you to do that. I made it okay for you to go to China and play basketball. I made it okay for you to think about going to play basketball in China. Because you wasn't thinking about going to a place where there are 300 plus million people who play basketball. Mm. It's more people in China that play basketball than there are people here breathing. In America. In America. Right. Go census report. It's probably 317, 2076 people in, 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 in America right now. That number is not that off. You go look at how many people play basketball, Google it, Wikipedia, whatever you want. How many people are estimated to play basketball in China? It's going to tell you 300 plus million people. And that's why the NBA was, what was that? They, they had a lot of little situation with, uh, the NBA, some was that the trade deal, something like that? Visiting China was on the internet with LeBron, and they wanted LeBron to come out and speak against China. But there's a lot of basketball there, and there's a lot of fans oh, of basketball. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, because it was yeah over the Hong Kong protests. Exactly, but it's bigger than basketball. And what people need to understand is that the game is not just in America or China; it's global. And when you start talking about global things and people never experience those places, it's just like a dude never ever having sex with a girl and never having that feeling. If you don't know that feeling, you could tell him or, or tell him the world about how shorty with the fatty felt. It ain't going to matter. <laughs> he ain't going to know. You understand what I'm no saying? Much no me. matter how much you tell him, he not going to know. He not going to never understand. And if you never go to China, you never experience it. If you never go to Italy, you're not going to know. You're just a person that's talking about what you read or what you heard. That's it. You have no emotional feeling or connection to that, period. Stefan Marbury, when can we get the doc, man? The doc is out March 10th. Check it out. It's what, not a it basketball on? doc. It's a basketball <laughs> doc. It's going to hit theaters. Oh, this is in theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you doing screeners for it? <laughs> of course. Tonight, yeah. Tonight, Brooklyn Academy of Music. Is our ticket still available? No, no, no. I think that's just a little private thing. But they'll be available for, you know, for public March to see. March 10th is going to be, you know, when people watch this, when they see this, they're going to have that aha moment. Like, yo, I was believing something for 20 years for real. You really made me believe that? You made me think that? Mm -hmm. Like, it don't, it, no, it, you don't see black kids from Coney Island go to some place where there's 1.4 billion people and play basketball and they build two statues in a museum Seven five kilometers away from Tiananmen Square on a main road in China and Beijing. I don't even really think people understand that. They need to start really using Google for real so they can understand. Dude, the name is planted inside the traffic lights on the on Waze and <laughs> Marbury Museum, homie. Like, <laughs> we talking about a whole nother movement on Earth. This is not for real. This is different stuff. This is not... For everybody, they learn this about they learn about this in history like 30, 50 years later. from now. Later. <laughs> Which is part of the legacy. You don't know me from basketball. You just know what they was writing and what they was telling telling people about my story when it wasn't true because I didn't listen or because I said something about Larry Brown. Are you serious? Come on, be for real. This is the real show. This and like you said paper. earlier, it's bigger than basketball, it's right? Because that's bigger. just one chapter. It's life. Life, the involvement in the ever growing of life. How are you actually really penetrating people's 
roots. You want people that's really gonna put water on you, like really push real fresh mm -hmm. dirt on you when you growing the tree, right? You don't want nobody to be in there kicking it, spitting. Well, it's just on like it. what what we it's saw right. with people grieving over Kobe, right? He was more than basketball. Bigger, he's more. a spirit. Right. Like I heard people talking about Kobe right now and I watched him and I'm like, wow, you hate Kobe. But because he died and everybody is saying the same thing, you really are not sticking to what you... Yeah, I get it. It should change you. It should make you speak about him in a positive way. But now he looked up to you. Get the fuck out of here. You got to be out of... You got to be kidding me. No, I'm sorry. But excuse my language. But Kobe had his own space on earth and what he was doing and how he was manifesting. He was becoming a, a spirit on earth before people even knew that Kobe was becoming this. This mentality is a real thing. <laughs> this is how you lock in as a hooper. Any hooper, anybody that played basketball, they hit five jump shots in a row, they felt like they hot. <laughs> like, give me the ball. <laughs> that's a feeling that you get. He mastered that feeling. <laughs> Like, that's why I was, yo, if Kobe get the ball, you know it's going up. Why wouldn't it and go up? he transcended up? that vibration to yes, other people. this is the energy that he yeah. got. That's the mentality. When, But not everybody know how to explain that mentality, how to tap into that space, into that zone. But when you try to tell somebody that on a court and teach them that, that's the hard part. And mm. that's what I'm doing right now with Chinese kids, with foreign kids that play for me. This is my evolution of basketball. That's his evolution of basketball, what he did, creating that mentality before he, before he left us. Mm -hmm. You got what I'm saying? The, the, it's, it's, it's devastating because it's not just him. It's his daughter. It's other families. It's other people that were impacted um, from this, which is why it magnified the way how it magnified on the earth. I seen people, Indian people with Kobe Bryant jerseys on all over different countries, people talking about this and because of what happened. It's supposed to help change human beings and how they feel. As my mom said, all we got in this world, Stefan, are our feelings. Mm. That's it. That's all we got. Mm. How you make people feel, that's how, that's that's right there, your cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And with from what happened, that's what made people feel the way how they feel. So it's good to see people being kinder to other people. But it's, 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 it's no work that's put into it, so it fades, and people go right back to themselves, right? When they eventually, it's like, just like I seen when I was in China, Nipsey Hussle died. Everybody did this, this, and then all of a sudden, I was like, let's see how long they can carry this. And then it just fades. Don't, it's, love people from the beginning. But I think that's what you're talking about, too, the leadership aspect, right? Because There's if, there, none. if there was leadership that was transcending... It's fake, people, it's fake leadership going on. But if there was leaders that were teaching what you were talking about, right? Which was teaching about how to connect and like what Kobe, whether yes. it's teaching his daughter or yes. you coaching kids, then yes. people begin to cherish yes. for longer periods 100%. of time. 100%. But that's not what's taught. If you're not taught, how you gonna know? You That's can't right. get mad at little kids when they don't know how to do something. You see people they screaming at their kids, yeah, da, 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 da. That's because they didn't know. Mm -hmm. If they knew, they wouldn't talk to their kid. They wouldn't talk to their kid like that. They wouldn't treat them like that. They would really love them, but because they weren't loved, because they wasn't coddled, because they wasn't told you can do it, because they didn't tell you that I love you every night before you go to sleep, and they still whoop your ass, my mom. Get the broom. What? You going to tell me to go get the broom and then you going to hit me with it? <laughs> like, nah, I'm hiding it. I'm going to find this stuff on. You You got one, but still tell you how much they love you. Like my mother said, I'm going to be with you when you wrong and I'm going to be with you when you right because I love you. But you're going to tell the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Yeah. So these ideologies of thinking and what needs to be spoken about, it's the regular basic things. And I learn a lot of this from China. I watch how, how they treat their people. 5,000 years, it's hard to stay consistent doing something for 5,000 years. It's a reason why it's that long, right? It's passed down. So when you think dynasty, we hear about dynasty in America. It's like, oh, we even thinking about the show or we know a little bit about what's going on in China, right? And then we think about that. It's a real thing. Or you think of the Jay-Z album. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
I love Jay Z as an artist. I, I I I don't agree with the things that he say to manipulate people's minds, but I think that he's a person that can really speak and be really influential when he want. I just think it's too late. Mm. That's what I think. I just think it's too late for Jay Z to be I'm, for for to be that. I mean, you can help and go re- pay people, pay people doctor bills and pay everybody, but it didn't start from the root, homie. Mm. How do you feel about the, uh, the how Jay handled the cap situation? I don't have no comment about what he do and what they do because these people do a lot of different things for different reasons. And when I can't feel the intent of it being something that's positive and that's going to help all of us, I'm not down. I'm down for and that's everybody. All, and that's be always good. been you. Period. 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 That's the, that's the teachings. That's the raising. I'm six of seven. Right. I got a brother that's going to be 60 today. So my thinking is a little bit different. I can converse with 70, 80 year olds because of my mom, and I could converse with a two year old because I got a grandson. Mm-hmm. So. I'm in a I'm in a long real I'm in a real long thing. These people have just had start having kids. I've been had my daughter is, is on her second child. Right. So my understanding and my thinking is a little bit different on earth for what I want for you have people. A, a, a larger view. Yeah, my view is for human beings to I don't why would I want to see somebody dying or hurt? Why we got to shoot somebody for something? Because you don't want to work for it. So you want to go the easy way. But all of this was part of when he was conceived and how his mom treated him when he was in the womb. All of this the, all of this stuff. So the self-love and the self-soothing of how you treat before you come to life. right? In China, they got different birthdays than birthdays than us. It starts when you conceive and after three months, you start. So that starts your, your mm. one years old. Mm. Right, so but this is the way of living. Some so people think like that. At the third it start. Month. It start. It starts once you are visibly. We know that we we we're gonna a, have a there's baby. A, there's a heartbeat in like there. that's what some people they don't like to tell people ahead of time. Like, oh, I'm pregnant, and then they lose the baby, and right. then it's devastating for a woman, right? But when the the time is to let people know, they'll know. Mm-hmm. They'll see it. That mean the process of life is starting to take place, and it's happening for that woman. You got what I'm saying? That's why people having babies, but they not their babies. How you connect? Oh, you talking about surrogates and I'm, all that. I, I, it's, so, it, it's great for science, but how do you really connect? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you do it? Humanly, like this me personally. That's right. How do you really, how do you connect? I think it's beautiful for people who can't and then they are able to because they give all that love to that to that human being, which is great. But you got people just doing it just to do it. For the money. And and also for, on behalf of, quote unquote, people who can't conceive. Yeah, they're helping. I mean, so it's it's a beautiful thing, but these things that happen, it's real sensitive and touchy because changing a shitty diaper every day, that could be tiring for some people. Some people are just not ready for that. When people, when my daughter got out of having a baby. They wanted to have a psychiatrist talk to her because this was something new. Like, now you got somebody right there that's a re- that's a real human being. Right. Some little girls who have babies who shouldn't be having babies, but they supposed to have them because they having them. Now it's time to, you got to be real. Yeah. And you got to cope. and You got to deal with it. Right. The crying. You don't get no sleep. When you don't, just think about when you don't get no sleep, how you feel. Nuts. Now imagine how you feel, you got to take care of baby. So for the men, the we got a different and movement pumping, and how and we feeding, feel. And the diaper, and the this. It don't oh, turn it off. Every day, it, it it's 24 hours. It don't that's, turn that's, off. It's a real thing. So, you know, when you're conscious about these little things and you see that, you're like, that's real. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm getting older. I mean, I'm not young like how I was at one time where you didn't have to think about that. But, you know, you see this and you notice and you're like, damn, I got real things that I got to deal with. Like, it doesn't change just because you got a billion dollars. Who cares you got a billion dollars? What are you doing with it? Right. Are you giving it to damn near everybody so everybody can eat and still you can live your life the way you want to live, but everybody can use your money? No, you're not doing that because it's mine. When is it going to be about us? And you made your your legacy about us. It's like Period. with the shoes and everything you did for Period. the neighborhood. 
It's that's what it is. It's it, it, and like financially, I, you still made great investments and are still doing great. No, this is what it is. Financially, I'm not doing great. I'm doing I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Doing great would be being like how I could possibly be like if my brand was still doing what it was doing. That's doing great when not everybody trying to kill at. Right, but it's okay though, cause I was supposed to go through what I went through and going back, going to China and then coming back to do what I'm doing. This is why a kid in Coney Island coming out, homie. Right, <laughs> full circle. <laughs> exactly, you get to see it real live in the flesh. Full circle. Stefan Marbury, ladies and gentlemen, kid from Coney Island, Bam, Brooklyn Academy of Music, and in theaters. Thank you, man, for the energy, man. Love and sharing all those thoughts, man. It's That's cool. dope, man. Thank it's you, good. Stefan Marbury. One time. <laughs>